Today we're gonna do a, a Killer Instinct test and test out Killer Instinct games upon a few different formats. We're gonna try out um, Killer Instinct for Game Boy. In a Game Boy, I mean, even though you had you know Atari Lynx and uh, Sega Game Gear, the Game Boy pretty much destroyed all the competition, even having its monochrome graphics. Now we're gonna spruce this up just a little bit. I'm gonna go into my Gimbita. I keep pronouncing this wrong in all my videos, but I'm gonna go into my options. And I'm gonna enable Game Boy Colorization. And I'm gonna leave it on auto. And I'm gonna resume and we'll have a little bit of color in this test. So it's pretty archaic, but it works if you're on the go, years ago. I like how they attempted to replicate the music from the amazing soundtrack that originally came with the Super Nintendo version when you bought it. I don't know if you guys remember that. When you pre-order the game, they give out a soundtrack to the game on CD, and that, that was a great disc. And even right now, it's sort of pricey if you try to buy it on eBay. So we have the Game Boy version, works fine, and I added color, it works fine. Now we're going to try out the Super Nintendo Killer Instinct. I believe if I remember correctly, somebody did a Killer Instinct NES hack as well. I pl I'm pretty sure I played it one time. And I'm running this through Canoe right now, it seems to function just fine. I've always been a fan of using Saber Wolf as my main character. Next, we're going to test out the Nintendo 64 version and see how well it runs on the SNES Classic. But the Super Nintendo one on Canoe seems to run just fine. Now, I've always liked the combo system where you could do one move and as you're doing the move, you could pretty much start the motion for the next move. So if you're holding back for two seconds and pushing forward and attack while you're doing that motion, you could hold the opposite direction. So back, two seconds, attack, and while you're doing that, forward, two seconds, and attack, and it's pretty sweet. So combos are not that difficult to do once you understand how that system works. Now we're going to try out the Nintendo 64 version, and hopefully it runs on here. I do have the Rare Replay collection on Xbox One, and it runs quite well on there. And I also have uh, Killer Instinct Arcade 1 and 2 on there, along with the Killer Instinct Reboot. I'm running this through the Gloopin N64 core, and right now it's running pretty good. I'm gonna go back to Saber Wolf. We have just a little bit of lag. I'm gonna try to speed this uh, game up just a little bit. I'm gonna go into my quick menu. Sorry, settings, video. I'm gonna disable V-Sync. Then I'm gonna go into my audio, and I'm gonna turn audio sync off. And remember these options because you might want to re-enable them because you're gonna get fast forward in games that are a little bit faster than this. It's a good way to farm games too. If you turn, you know, the V-Sync off and the audio sync off, you're gonna get fast forward in a lot of games that don't normally have uh, issues running at a good pace. So let's see how this runs. We still have a little bit of the sound skipping. Not much I can do there. So I'm going to turn those back on. But I'm going to show you in another game what those options will actually do. It did not really help this game out too much. But certain games it does help out quite well. So I'm turning the uh, V-Sync on and the uh, Audio Sync back on. And the Audio Sync, when you have it on, it'll keep the sound from skipping. Now we're back to normal. Still run pretty good. And of course we have the Moopin 64 Plus Core. We can test it out on well. So as of right now, the Super Nintendo version plays the best, obviously. I'm going to just load a random NES game. We'll try Deadly Towers, and I'm going to show you what happens when you do the options I just did in that Killer Instinct on Nintendo 64. I'm going to go into my settings, video, and I'm going to disable V-Sync. Then I'm going to go into audio, disable sync, and let's see how fast this game runs according 
to the normal speed you'd be accustomed to. See? It's a good way to farm games if you're killing a bunch of enemies in a row. So in certain games like Rygar and Willow for NES, they work great with that, but... I did it on uh, Killer Instinct Nintendo 64 to see if it would help a little bit. By disabling V-Sync, it definitely helps, but doing the audio sync, taking it off, it hurt it a little bit. So you could try it, I mean, more than one way. So I'm going to put these options back on, and I'm going to do my final test, which is going to be Killer Instinct 2 Arcade, and we'll see how that runs. I'm turning my V-Sync back on. Turn my audio sync back on. I'm going to quit back to the main GUI and we're going to see if this Killer Instinct 2 loads. Killer Instinct 2 Arcade. And of course, I wouldn't expect it to run that fast because it is a, a CPU intensive game, even on some older PCs that I've run it on. And I'll go back for Saber Wolf again. It is running, but there are definitely sound issues here, and the game's running quite slow. Let's see how the game works in action. I'll turn V-Sync off and see if that helps any. My settings video again. And I'm just going to turn V-Sync off and I'm going to leave the sound alone. It helps out just a little bit. So this is more of a novelty than actually something you can take seriously. I mean... It is pretty closely approximated to run the slideshow on a computer. <laughs> but it's definitely a cool gimmick to be able to run Killer Instinct 1 and 2 Arcade on the system. I mean, if you just want to toy with it. But uh, yeah, Killer Instinct 2 does run. Killer Instinct 1 runs, but they do not run very good at all. Hope you enjoyed the video and... Uh, Briefly, before I exit the video, I'm going to show you how I installed Killer Instinct 1 and 2, so you know the format. I'm switching over to the computer, opening up my hash sheet. So I did the normal thing where I go to File, Add, and I added that Killer Instinct, you know, like, kind of like so. I added the actual zip file through MAME. But once that was all said and done, I went into my games folder that I installed the ROM in. And you can watch my main tutorial video to see how to add main games, but there's a dependency as far as running the game, and I went into my folder. I'm going into my games SNES folder, the ones that I had just added. I gotta go down a few to get to Killer Instinct. Getting there, real close. Okay, we have Killer Instinct 2. I added the zip file as an archive, but then I came into this directory, and I added the folder with the CHD file inside. This is the dependency that is needed to run the ROM. So you need the ROM, and you need the hard drive image. And this works the exact same way when you run uh, DOSBox games and... A few other things. You could actually add the pertinent files after you install the main file to get them running. I hope you enjoyed the video. There'll be more.